Chapter Thirty One: The Book of Fairy Tales. Circe and Snow White sat close to each other as the Odd Sisters' house settled into place. Wherever they had landed, it was dreadfully dark. Snow, stay here while I go have a look around. Circe said, "We seem to have stopped." Snow held on to Circe's hand tightly, not wanting to let go. "I'll come with you." Together, the two felt their way through the house, stumbling to the largest window. Snow gasped. They were in a sea of darkness, surrounded by pools of glittering stars that moved as if they were dancing to music the women could not hear. Bright green and yellow lights streaked across the dark curtain of night, more beautiful than at any sunset or sunrise they had ever witnessed. Circe had no idea where they were, though she had a feeling she knew where they weren't. They weren't anywhere within the men, the many kingdoms. But somehow, explicitly, they felt she felt safe. I think the house has moved to its original place, the place of its birth. I remember my sisters talking about this. They warned me it might happen if anything ever happened to them. But honestly, I dismissed it. I regret now how often I didn't listen to their ravings. But everything they said was in fragments and rhymes. It was so hard to understand them. Snow White was surprisingly composed. I see. Well, I suppose there's nothing to be done about it. Do you think Nanny received the message you sent? She asked as she went around the room, lighting the candles on the sc- sco- sco- sconces. Soon the room was filled with light. Circe blinked, letting her eyes adjust. I do think she got it. I sent it while we were still in the many kingdoms, before we left the world we know. But I'm afraid there isn't a way to contact her now. Snow White went to the love seat and picked up the mirror Circe had used to communicate with Nanny. Can't we use this? Snow had forgot. Circe had forgotten all about the mirror. Let's try. She took the mirror. Show me Nanny. Nothing happened. Show me Maleficent. Still nothing. Circe sighed and put down the mirror. Snow seemed to be thinking. What about the fairy tale book? She asked. I wonder if it's still writing everyone's story the way it was when my mother and I looked at it. Oh, you are brilliant, Snow. Let's check. Circe said, opening the book. It is. Look here, Snow. Was this scene here before between Nanny and Maleficent? Snow took the book and read the pages, quickly skimming over the parts of the story she already knew. This is strange. Some of it has changed, just little bits here and there. I have no idea how magic works, Circe. But do you think the story is rewriting itself as new events occur? Circe wasn't sure, but it seemed like that was a good theory. It's likely, she said. Interesting. I wonder. I wonder. Snow turned the pages to see what else had changed. Wait, this story wasn't there before. Snow saw a beautiful illustration of Circe as a small child. It was unmistakable. In the illustration, Circe was standing with her three older sisters under a brilliant ne- night sky. Snow had never seen so many stars, even in her own enchanted kingdom. She noticed that Circe's sisters were standing around her in a triangular conf- configuration, and there were markings on the ground that glistened in the moonlight. It was an odd illustration, and Snow didn't know what to make of it. What? What is it? Circe asked, seeing the expression on Snow's face. Snow White wrinkled her nose and pursed her lips. Circe was coming to realize that little habit meant Snow White was concerned. The story is about you. Circe felt a jolt of shock move throughout her entire body. I don't want to see it, Snow. I don't. Please, let's just skip it. Snow gave Circe a look as if to ask if she was sure. When Circe didn't reply, Snow turned back to the Dragon Witch's story. She skimmed the pages to see if anything else new had been added. As they turned the pages, reading the heartbreaking story Maleficent had shared with Nanny, Circe had to wonder if there wasn't some par- small part of Maleficent that was still good. Otherwise, Circe figured she would have already killed the prince. What was holding her back? Circe knew her sisters would have killed him, or driven him to some sort of madness by now. What is it? What's the matter, Circe? 
Snow asked. The story was so much like Snow's that Cersei didn't want to upset her by bringing up dark events from her past. I just don't understand why she put the curse on Aurora. Everything else makes sense. I see her motivations, but not that part. Snow White put her hand on her cousin's cheek and smiled. That's because you have never had a mother who tried to kill you. As awful as your sisters are, they clearly love you. I know they've lied and they've hurt people. They've hurt you. But after reading what they did for Maleficent, how they tried to help her, it seems to me they were very good witches at one time. Cersei thought that was an extremely kind thing for Snow to say, considering everything her sisters had done to Snow. Then Snow said something that surprised her. And I think I know why Maleficent cursed her daughter. I think I know why she wanted her to die. You do? I think I do.